Hi, welcome back to Debris Day. Today on Debris Day is part two of attempting to make Mokume Geni. Let's go guys. So as you can probably remember from part one, I made some Mokume Geni and it was okay, it wasn't very good. But I've done some more research about this, this art, uh, about how to make Mokume Geni. Um, first thing first, this is one of the attempts that I made. I'm just going to look at the camera so I can make sure it's zoomed in for you. In fact, I'll put it down here. Um, this is one of the attempts that I've actually made previously. And as you can see, there's lots of different layers in there. That's uh, the copper and the, the brass. Um, I still have some DLAM on the top and I really wouldn't want to hit this on the end, but you can see some DLAM just about, if I can zoom in there, just about there, some DLAM on it as well. Um, the piece I've made recently looks like this after we've cleaned it and cut it. Um, again, uh, it's not the best piece of Makumagani and it's starting to delaminate. So I picked up this book um, called Makumegene by Ian Ferguson. So on the forums, everybody recommends that this is the book that you should, uh, that you should pick up. Um, I picked it up on, uh, on the internet. Um, it's normally, <laughs> would you believe, would you believe it's out of print and if you want to buy a new version, it's £400, which is uh, something like $650, ridiculous. Um, I managed to go on Amazon and get a used one for £45. Um, and it's really important because it, what, it, what it teaches you is uh, the different stages of Makumigeni. So the process that we followed last time wasn't far off. Now one of the key things I want to try today is um, when we've cut out the um, pieces of metal, so the brass and the copper, um, we've got to make sure that they are absolutely flat. So I'm going to use the uh, big slab of granite that I've got, which I use for the knife making, which I'll post up here. Um, the big slab of granite I've, I've got, I'm going to use that. I'm going to use some uh, silicon carbide uh, sandpaper, SU20 grit. I'm going to circle them uh, with that carbide paper and make them completely flat. I think that's one of the things that I'm missing. It also goes on to show you a picture, which I will just show you now. Here we go. This is the picture I want to show you, and I will give copyright to Ian, because this is absolutely amazing. Now, if you look at that top picture, that shows you metal with distilled water, which is not clean or contaminated. And this picture down here is exactly the same piece, but with uh, distilled water on it, but it is clean, absolutely clean. See, the water doesn't boil. So I'm going to try and get my metal to this stage here. Then I'm going to put it into my... Um, my, my compression plates, which yeah, I just need to clean those up, and then we're going to try it again. So let's get cleaning. Okay, so as I mentioned, I've got my granite block out. I've just given it a spray down. I've already cut out these pieces of brass and copper here. All very rough, I've got my finger marks all on and whatnot. I'm gonna take them one by one onto here. Bearing in mind, this is a completely flat surface and I'm gonna sand these down using some 220 silicon grade um, sandpaper. And I'm gonna use some distilled water. I've got some deionized water, that'll be very similar. Um, and make sure that they're not bubbling um, or boiling that water on each of those plates. So I'm going to send each one first. Let's do that. Let's look at this. So we're going to put a bit of water on here. Um, like this. I don't know if this is right, but we're going to go. I'll, when I've finished sanding, I will then put my gloves on and go over once more, make sure they're absolutely clean. I'm going to do both sides. It's suggested in that book by Ian Ferguson that you twist the metal around as you go along. I'm going to put a piece of this on the side. It's going to have a piece of paper on the side, so as we complete them, we can put them on there. You do need a piece of a rough, bit of a rough surface in order for the metals to stick to each other. So I'm going to just lay them on here. I'll do all eight pieces. I'm only starting with eight pieces here because this is an experiment to see if it will work. And I'm wondering if they're not forging together um, because of the cleanliness of the metals that I'm using. So I'm going to do this first and then I'll put my gloves on. This is doing two things. This is making sure 
that each piece of metal is flat and that each piece of metal is clean. A completely different method to what I did last time. Last time we had some success, but I want to be able to forge these out. What I've had problems with last time is I can forge it flat, so um, compress it down, but what I couldn't do was forge it uh, elongated, so, so long ways, it kept delaminating, which means that it hadn't forged together. Now, I, now I've got to keep an eye on the temperatures. I know I can't um, have the metal uh, getting too hot because it will melt. So the melting point of brass is about 780-ish, maybe just under that. Um, and the melting point, uh, sorry, the melting point for copper is about 780, melting point for brass is about 700 or thereabouts. Um, I picked that up from the Ian Ferguson book. Um, so we've got to be careful. If we over melt these, then the brass will liquefy, as many dudes found out in the last video. And if you don't do it enough, then it won't forge. Okay, as you can see, I've sanded them all down. I'm now going to transfer them from this piece of paper here to this clean piece of paper over here. And I'm going to put some uh, deionized water onto them to see if it bubbles on it. If it doesn't bubble, then I'm comfortable that they're clean and I'll stack them into the plate. So let's do that. So now I'm wearing gloves. Let's move one of these onto here. Let's put some of the water on to see if it's, if it's clean or not. Let's have a look. It's certainly not bubbling up on that, so I'm comfortable with that. So I'm now going to start stacking them into my plate. So now the flat. If I want to put, I'm going to put copper on the bottom because copper has a higher melting point. Okay, they're all stacked. So they're all stacked. I'm now going to tighten this billet up and then I'm going to get it into the fire. Let's tighten it up and get it into the fire. Here we go. Okay guys, it's out. Um, I haven't seen if it's forged yet. I'm just trying to undo these bolts so I can uh, see if our Makumagani has worked. Let me do that and then let me show you the billet. Okay, so I've just taken out the forge and this is the first time I've had this happen, but as you can see the uh, copper or brass, I think it was brass or copper on the bottom, I can't quite remember, but it's stuck to the mild steel up here. Um, what I'm gonna do is just try and knock it off gently first. If I can't do that, with uh, a chisel, then I'm gonna have to cut around this or heat it up, one or the other. So let's have a go at doing that. <laughs> okay, after I try to chisel it off, uh, this is the stay of it, so it's clearly stuck to the bottom, um, but that took a hell of a lot of effort to get it off, which means this probably is forged. So I'm wondering if it is down to the, uh, the cleanliness of it. What I'm gonna do, because this is an experiment test, um, I'm gonna heat this up I think, and try and forge it a little bit flatter and see if it's actually held together. Let's do that.
Okay guys, so um, I've made a twist. I couldn't show you that because there's only me holding the camera today. I've made a twist and then I flattened out the billet into a small uh, length. That's only, oh, I don't know, the length of my finger. So what's that? Let's call it two and a half, two and a half inches, maybe three, an absolute push. Um, so we're gonna let it cool down and then we're gonna get onto the grinder and we're gonna see what it looks like. This is the exciting part, you never know what it's gonna look like until you grind it out. So let's let it cool down and let's have a go at uh, grinding it out. So guys, how did we do? I've been grinding and let me show you close up. There's still some inclusions in it, but if I show you the side, so we can get the light on there. The other side's a bit better actually. Can you see the stripes? So you can see the copper and the brass stripes. So that's where I put the twist in. Bearing in mind that the small amount that we started with, they've got a tiny inclusion here, which goes all the way around, and a tiny inclusion here. Try and focus that. See that inclusion? There we go. But it has forged. Compared to the first attempt, where we got complete delaminating, this is forged. Um, we had only eight little pieces to start with, you can see the delamination there, oh, sorry, it's breaking apart there slightly. But you can see the colours, we managed to forge it into a small billet, you can see the straight piece of that on that side. And overall, we have managed to do it. Now that's a bit better attempt than the last time. So, what have we learned? We have learned that cleanliness is next to godliness. Um, what we've actually learned is, is that for each of the pieces of copper or brass, or whichever metal you're gonna be using, first of all, they have to be flat. And if you think about it, it makes sense because you're compressing two pieces of metal together to forge them together, it has to be flat. Secondly, it has to be clean. So as you saw, I used the 220 silicon carbide uh, sandpaper and cleaned them all up. And then I put distilled water on top. If it was beading, it means it's not clean. If it rolls off, it means it is clean. So that's another learning point. Um, when we forge weld them together, you have to hit them hard. Um, so on those two compression plates, you hit them together uh, close together, uh, then you get it out of the uh, the two compression plates, and then I heated it up again, and I forge welded it flat, turned it over, and then forge weld on the ends. If it's compressed on the ends, then you know it's welded together. Um, mine looked really black, obviously, um, when I was doing the forging. I think it's because of the amount of time I left it in the forge. But when I got back onto the grinder and started cleaning that little piece of Makumagane up, it started to show its true colours. This is the joys of it. Um, it comes out with such pretty colours. I am going to do some more of these. As I get better, I'll try and um, educate, is the best word I can think of, you guys who are watching the channel to find out how to make it yourselves. So uh, that's it for this week, part two of Makuni Gane. There will be one more. Um, I want to get some nickel silver and try and put that into the equations here. That looks. Hope it's been useful. Any questions, queries, please ping me, uh, ping me below. I'll be more than happy to help you. And that's it for this week on Doobies Day. Oh, please remember to subscribe. We're nearly at 900 subs, which is brilliant. Thank you so much, guys. I do appreciate all of you watching and commenting. Okay, guys, thanks so much. See you next week on Doobies Day.